Next thing I want to talk about is some safety features. And this thing is actually loaded with pretty cool safety features. And uh, I shouldn't say loaded because the other ones have a lot more, but these are cool safety features. Uh, the first one is RTH, return to home. This drone has the ability to return to home if it has a home point that was recorded. There's three different types of RTH, and I'm going to talk about home point in a second. Smart RTH, low battery RTH, and then fail safe RTH. But before I talk about RTH, I need to talk about the home point. The home point is when the drone is, is um, turned on and it captures this uh, GPS signal for the first time, then it's going to record its position on the software. The software will know where the drone took off from, which means that when you take off, and you go somewhere else, if the drone needs to come back home, it knows exactly where home was, all right? That's your home point. The software is gonna tell you with a, a female voice, it's gonna say the home point has been updated, please check it on the map. I've heard that, I don't know how many times, well, every time I flew. Uh, and then the indicator in the back here is gonna turn green quickly to uh, tell you that the home point has been recorded. Now be careful, and I found this in during testing, uh, I was testing and then I was taking off from a point and landing somewhere else. When you land somewhere else, as soon as you land and you take off again, the home point gets updated right here, which is not the case for other DJI drones I've flown before. But in this case, you land and then now it records a new home point. So if you took off, you landed on a different place and then you went, farted around and then all of a sudden your battery gets low and the drone decides to go home, it's gonna go back to the last home point, which was further away than where you took off from. Now there's the ability to go in the software and you can go into the settings and you can actually change the home point and update it in flight. So you're flying around, something happens, you need to update it back to where the controller is located and you can actually do that. Um, in other software, in the DJI Go4 software, you have the ability to always have it follow the controller you don't have this ability here. You have to do it manually. If you were in a boat, for example, and the boat is moving with other software, you could have the drone come back to where the, the, the boat is located. In this case, you would have to keep updating the home point to bring the drone back to exactly where the boat is located. So at one point you would have to stop and then the drone would come back down. Just something that I need to mention, uh, if, you've, if you're flying from a moving vehicle, hopefully you're not driving, uh, but if you're flying from a moving vehicle, then uh, that would be one way to do it. Okay, let's talk about the three different types of RTH. First one is Smart RTH. It's called Smart RTH because you gotta be smart enough to push the button right here, which is our uh, RTH button. So it has a little H button right on it, so you would push that and hold it, and then the drone would go into RTH mode. You can also do the same thing by pushing on the app the return to home button and holding it, and then the drone will go into RTH. You have the ability to go into the settings, into the safety uh, section, I've shown you this before, where we can change the altitude of the RTH. The minimum altitude is 50 feet and the maximum is 1640. Keep in mind, 400 feet max in the United States. You're gonna say, Greg, what do you do when you go fly? Well, what I do is I look around and I look at trees. I look at the tallest obstacle around me. And if I were to fly away and something happened, I would wanna clear at least that obstacle. So I'm gonna set this to a certain altitude that I'm guessing, but also I'm gonna add another 50 foot buffer on top of it. Now. Sometimes I fly in areas where you're only limited to, not too long ago I flew a mission and I was limited to 50 feet. And 50 feet above the point where I took off from, basically, or basically above the ground. So what I did is uh, I had set this up at 50. So maximum RTH was 50 and then, um, and then the drone could not basically enter the airspace in which I wasn't supposed to be flying. Then we have low battery RTH. This is triggered when the battery gets low. Battery is too low, the drone knows that it's gonna take so much battery to come back, and then at that stage, it basically says, well, I gotta come back. So it enters into low battery RTH. There's gonna be a warning on the thing. It's gonna give you 10 seconds to make a decision. You can cancel any time you want during low battery RTH, but you do it at your own peril, which means that if the battery gets too low at one point, then it's just going to auto land. It's just gonna come down because it doesn't wanna shut down in flight. So it has that little margin and then 
boom, it just comes down. So if you went too far, there's a famous video from several years ago where there's this guy, you see him running and running, and then he runs into, uh, there's like a, a fountain or something, a large uh, volume of water, and he's running into the water because the drone is coming down slowly, slowly, slowly because he messed up with the uh, low battery RTH. And you see him jumping at the last minute and reaching out and grabbing this, uh, and grabbing the drone before it hits the water. And so uh, don't, don't be that guy. I say this a lot. Don't be that guy. Um, you can still control the drone during auto landing. So you can still move the sticks. It will uh, go to the left, go to the right, go up and down and left and right and do all these things. The last type of RTH is the failsafe RTH. And failsafe RTH is if you lose the signal between the controller and the drone, then after uh, 11 seconds, the drone is going to fly backwards by 50 meters, which is 150 feet from its original route. So you went in this direction, the drone lost signal with the controller. It's like, oops, let me back up. It backs up 150 feet and hopefully catches the signal again. And if it doesn't, then it's going to go into failsafe RTH and then it's going to come back. Okay. You can actually change the behavior of failsafe RTH in the settings. If you wanted it to hover, you can do that. So if it loses the signal with the controller, it's going to hover. It's going to land. That's an option. I don't like that one very much. Or it's going to basically come back and return to home. So I always have mine set up to return to home. Um, there are some situations. If you were on a boat, for example, uh, you would want it to hover. You would just want it to stay right there. You definitely don't want it to be landing. But if you were on the boat and then it, you don't want it to be returning to a, a random spot where you were before, uh, then that's what you would want to do. Now, when RTH gets engaged, it doesn't matter if it's a manual RTH or smart RTH, if it's a battery or if it's a fail-safe RTH, the, the behavior is going to be the same. And it really, there's going to be only three scenarios. And the first two scenarios are you are further than 65 feet away from the controller. So you're flying your drone, you go 65 feet or longer. And then at that point, what we have is RTH goes on. If the drone is located below RTH altitude, so below the altitude that you had picked, the drone is going to climb to that altitude and then it's going to come back and then it's going to land right where it took off from at the home point. Very simple. The second scenario is the drone is at an altitude higher than the return to home altitude. You set your return to home altitude at 100, but you're already at 150. The drone is not going to come down. It's not going to come down to 100. It's going to stay at 150. It's going to head back to uh, on top of your home point, and then it's going to come down and land. And that's if you're 65 feet or more away from the, uh, the controller. If you are less than 65 feet away from the controller, and if you have the newer firmware installed, then the drone is just going to hover. The idea is, if you're not 65 feet away or more, then the idea is you can see the drone. It's right around you, right? And if that's the case, then the drone is basically just going to hover right here. Then you can take control, bring it back manually, and then, uh, and then land it. If you have the older firmware, which is before 1.1.0.0, then the drone is actually going to land. And I don't like that. I don't like that option, uh, even if it's only within 65 feet, uh, but it, it's just going to land automatically. So don't let it do that. Up upgrade your firmware so that doesn't happen. During RTH, you can still control the drone. You can stop the aircraft from uh, descending, from climbing. You can basically move it around and, uh, and then just have full uh, control of the drone. Now, be careful if there is a geo zone. A geo zone is maybe an area where uh, the drone is not allowed to fly between you and the drone then it's not going to enter that geo zone. It's going to stop RTH. It's going to try to get around it by climbing or descending, I think. And then if that's the case, then uh, you can get in trouble. Uh, that would happen if you had a changed location and if you had updated your return to home point in flight, uh, then there's no way to enter a geo zone. So just be careful with that part. Mm -hmm.